Joining us, Gyanpeet Awardee, senior Kannada writer, Girish Karnar. Are you surprised really at the level of controversy, of back and forth that's been going on on this? You see, I'm surprised about the controversy, but this controversy is not really about Tipu, you know. It's, a, the, it's a, an example of the state of political discourse that going on. You say anything and gundaism begins. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they don't need... Uh, and the gundaism is led not by people in the street. That, of course, one's used to. I've been through it. But political leaders, I mean, people who one would have thought had more sense and more uh, intelligence uh, about it, you see. Uh, so that's it. I, I don't think this... Con no, the controversy itself doesn't... Either bother me or surprise me. I have been through these controversies earlier, as you know, know that in the Kaveri water also I, I was surrounded by police here. Mm -hmm. For 25 days I was surrounded. So, so no, the con uh, well, I'm, I'm saddened by the controversy yes. because it was a very simple remark. All I said is that I had suggested or I would have liked the uh, international airport to be named after Tipu because he was born in Devanaldi. Yes. This was nothing against Kem Kempe Goda, it was nothing against any community. I'm neither a Wakaliga nor a Muslim, so that I have no axe to grind. So the whole thing has been spun out of, uh, you know, out of proportion. And there are obviously professionals doing it all the time. A sign of the times? Hmm? A sign of the times? Sadly, I think. Sadly, I think. Because, you know, if we are a mature democracy, we've been there. we should have mature dialogue. I mean, we can have a dialogue on Tipu, certainly. You can disagree with him, or disagree, agree with the, uh, you know, the celebrations. But the level of uh, abuse and the level of uh, threats, I've just been told that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm someone who wants to shoot me and, you know, fortunately I don't have... I don't have tweets and Twitter, and, and I'm not on Facebook, so I, I'm blissfully unaware of all those things. Yes, there was a tweet since deleted saying that you should be killed, you should be, die for this. How do you respond to things like this, with threats like this? As I said, I didn't know there was a threat. <laughs> okay. And I don't take, you know, I, I lead my own life. I mean, what can one do? One can't live for everyone. You have been the target of much of the protests. Even yesterday, there were BHP protests about. Your statement, like you said, as you since clarified, about Tipu Sultan, about the airport, but you have been the target of this. How do you deal with this at a personal level? Because right now there is security outside your house, there are policemen sitting in your garden. How do you deal with this? At 12.30, I'll take a glass of gin and, you know, uh, tonic water, and I'll spend 25 minutes having gin and tonic water. Then I'll have lunch. Then I'll have a nap till 4 o'clock. That's how I respond to it. How else can one respond? Business as usual, life as usual. Absolutely. It's up to them to keep themselves busy, not me. I, I know when I write, I read, I, you, know, I, I, you know, my life goes on. And the police are there, fortunately. So. The police are there, as you said. You've not refused that protection. Do you take these tweets or these threats seriously to some no, extent? No, but I take the government's responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, now... Kalburgi uh, turned down the, his uh, security, he was shot, so everyone blames the government. Everyone blames the police. Now, that's not fair. Mm. You know, if the government feels that there is, uh, if your life is in danger, and we, we provide, I would co cooperate because, you know, and give, uh, you know, they should have the, uh, the, the, the benefit of your support until they think uh, I need to be. You know, I, as I said, after Kaveri Galata, I, was, I had the police here for 20 days. And then they took them away because the whole thing died down. Uh, no, I'm not um, poo-pooing the danger. It's not for me to uh, poo-poo. It's the police, the officers. They have their information. They have their people. And, you know, I cooperate. I don't want to, them to be blamed later saying, oh, they didn't protect Girish Karnat. Social media threats, per se. Do you take them seriously? Do you think that a person who tweets a threat... No, I as I said, I don't, I don't have Twitter or uh, Facebook, so I don't know what's going on on the street. And, and my son has said, don't take Twitter, because you'll have to respond then. So, no. No. Hmm. But do, do you feel somebody on Twitter would actually carry out that thread, or is it just empty words no, on I've social media? No, I've never had Twitter, even before this. I've never... And you take, so, 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 do you take would you take no, a threat no, seriously no, no, by no. somebody made on Twitter? I think, you know... You see, Twitter enables one to be, on the whole, irresponsible. You know, because you just put that little one sentence and then you're done with it. You, there's no argument. If there was at least an argument, if there was a discussion, there was something. You know, here's something you put... Um, some people obviously love it, but um, I can do without it. You spoke about protests on the street. You sp we've sp spoken about social media, actually, critical of you. 
there have also been leaders saying that you should be expelled. Yes, How do you respond? Now, that is the example, that is the kind of, of irresponsible talk. Now, this remark was made by an ex-chief minister, uh, ex minister of Karnataka, I'm told, Sadhananda Gowda. Now, I think it's sad, sad that a man of his eminence, a man of his responsibility, makes such nonsensical remarks. Now, for a start, he can't expel me. He's not in a position to expel me. Expel me to where? You know, so this is just, uh, you know, the, the kind of words that are used in Bihar, you know, call someone a dog, call someone, you know, uh, in a sense, it is a sign of helplessness. The person doesn't know what to do, he, he abuses, like most people abuse when they're helpless and so on. But that it should come from political leaders is very saddening. Leaders who have, you know, who, who have been in charge of the uh, state and law and order. Now, a man has in fact approached the police with a complaint against you for your comments. How do you respond to that? I don't know what the complaints are, so I, there's no way of responding. I don't know what, what was it that was offensive that, um, um, that he has complained about. Now, the right wing says that Tipu was a tyrant who persecuted the Christians, who persecuted the Hindus, that he was a tyrant, a despot who persecuted Christians, who persecuted Hindus. Listen, there is a book by Praxi Fernandez. Okay, who was a Catholic, who was the chief minister of, um, uh, of Karnataka. And he used the state papers here to write a book called The Tigers of Mysore. And you must read what he says about what the Catholics did to Tipu. They were in Mangalore and they were spying for the British because they said they are Christians. And he says he, he was perfectly right because they were in Mangalore. He says it's a big port. And he, uh, Praxi Fernandez says, not only did he drive the Catholics to Mysore, but he actually got a priest from Goa so that they could carry on their uh, uh, prayers. So when most people talk like that, they don't know their facts. They're talking through their hats, if I may say, if they wear a hat. But the hats were worn by the British. So I don't know, caps, I suppose one should say. And Hindus? Was he an enemy of the Hindus? Well, that's, I'm considered an enemy of the Hindus from what I've read. So Tipu Sultan may very well have been accused of that. And you remain a staunch admirer of Tipu Sultan. There's no way you would backtrack on any praise that you have given him. On what grounds? Because of this baying crowd? I mean, they're not going to make me change my uh, estimate of Tipu. I have worked on Tipu. I worked for two years solidly. I had a whole library of uh, books on Tipu, which I have donated to a... Uh, research center. So, I mean, you know, why should I change my mind? I know perfectly well what I think of him. A continued support then, a continued admiration of Tipu Sultan. Is there anything you would like to say to these people at the other end of social media, at the other end of these political statements, the person on the street? Anything you'd like to say to them? No, if you, uh, if you are enjoying yourself, carry on. I, say that, so. I mean, everyone carries on doing what they enjoy doing. Obviously, they enjoy the uh, shouting and screaming. Fine. Thank you so much there, Will. Gyan Peterwadi, Girish Karna there. Life as usual, business as usual, despite being the target of much anger in the midst of this entire controversy over the Congress government celebrating the birth anniversary of Tipu Sultan. With Alphonse Raj, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV.